then let's move forward. And this is our um, continuing COVID-19 protection report. And um, Bill's going to briefly go through what um, departments have reported to him and what our activities are. And um, there are some questions from the board. And so as we go along, if your questions aren't answered, please address them to Bill. Thank you. Go ahead, Bill. Sure, sure. So just continuing from, from the last meeting, essentially, uh, we're still continuing with basically the same protocols as before in each of the departments. Um, there are a couple of nuances or a couple of changes. Um, I know there was a, um, there was a request for the number of, of fire, how many fire calls, if there have been any changes from um, since the COVID-19 um, <clears throat> restrictions have been in place. So um, for the for the fire department, Dave, are you on the line? Oh, is he muted over here in the corner? Woodstock emergency, is that David? I'm on mute. I believe I'm unmuted now. Okay. 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 Do, do, do you want to uh, kind of fill in the blanks there on the, the number of calls? And sure. From from last month, since the uh, COVID nineteen crisis began. Yep. So uh, fire calls really haven't changed uh, at all. Um, EMS calls have changed a little. Our account is about the same, but what we're seeing is um, less calls for minor incidents and more calls for people sick, not feeling well, flu-like symptoms. So we're pretty close to normal. Um, as far as call volume right now. And um, for the for the police department, they have seen um, a little bit of a change. They had um, from February 12th to March 12th, they had 142 um, calls, um, assists, and um, most of these were due to uh, food and medication deliveries to vulnerable populations, uh, choosing to isolate themselves. Um, but for the most part, I don't think there was, no, there wasn't a whole lot of change with the, uh, the police department. It's called numbers. Um, uh, the listers are pretty much operating at the same as the same as last time. Uh, planning and zoning, they are continuing to um, operate from home all meetings are on hold for them and i think that's until further notice um the town clerk's office uh, is operating basically the same if you want to add anything mary there uh the highway department this is probably where we have some of the biggest changes because we did get a update on the governor's order and we are no longer allowed to do street sweeping spring maintenance litter pickup ditching Essentially, we are left with filling potholes and doing um, grading. So that that leaves us with um, one question for the board or a, a request from the highway department to to purchase more materials to in order to do the grading. Now, this is not going to affect the cash flow because we are expecting that we're, we expect this to be about thirty to forty thousand. But we're also expecting a $45,000 reimbursement coming from FEMA from the storm last year. So this should cover one another. So we should not have an issue of cash flow. Um, if you're willing to approve that, we can go forward and that would allow the guys to continue working and do some necessary work and stay on task. And they're still, and they're still continuing with social distancing and staying away from one another. So there's no issue there. Um, Sounds like a good I, idea. It, it is a great idea. The only thing that we all need to understand and be reminded about is that the reimbursement for FEMA, while it has been approved, we can't be certain when we'll be receiving that money. But it is there. That is what it's for. The work was done at the beginning of the current fiscal year. The storm, you might remember, was April 16th. 2019, and um, 
we're waiting for money. It's been approved, but there's been a lot of money approved lately that suddenly seems to be vanishing from the federal government, but we'll hope for the best. So we would need a motion to approve the purchase of gravel. Does the board have any other questions about that? Um, I just want to say something to everybody who's on the phone. Um, some, t some of your phones are muted right now. And if you want to unmute to ask a question, press star six. And if you want to put your hand up to say that you want to ask a question, press star nine. Uh, Jill, I make a motion that we approve the money. Uh, Jill, I have one question before we ask for a second to that motion. I see a cell phone number that um, I'm wondering if that could be John Doton and the number ending in 1828 if they're on by a cell phone, if that is he. And I don't recognize that symbol in the corner of that. So maybe the people who are on phones, I'm unmuting you all, perhaps you can identify yourselves. So who's the person whose number ends in 1828? That that would be me, Jeffrey Kahn. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. And then who's who's the person whose number ends in six three seven three? And there's somebody else whose number ends in seven three three one. Can you identify yourself? Good morning, it's Lynn Beach. Thank you, oh, Lynn. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, so um, I just want Hannah. There's one more person. There's somebody who. There's somebody else on the phone who's just identified by iPhone. Oh, it could be me, Alan Stein, uh, the Vermont. Thank you. Leader. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. So it does not appear that we have John. He was going to join us by phone this morning. All right, Butch, please state your motion again. I make a motion that we approve to uh, advance with the materials needed to do the road work. And I'll second it. And then we have a question from Wendy. Can you hear me? Yes. W Wendy Marinin. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna address this question to Bill. Sure. Uh, I live on Mountain Avenue. And I'm, I've observed over time that uh, this, the level of our road, which is unpaved, which would involve grading, I presume, uh, gets higher and higher and our properties get lower and lower. And I'm wondering in light of purchasing materials, if, and I don't know anything about the grading, like I don't have any construction knowledge. Um, can you just take down, can you just, lower the street while grading, not add to the surface. Each time we just add more gravel, we, be, we get lower sides. You follow me? And then we be have to- I, I, Yes, yes, I am. And really that's a question I would read the post, <laughs> Ken Vandenberg, our highway department, um, department head. So let me, let me confer with him. If you wanna um, send, me your, send me your email and I can confer with you on that. Sure, sure. Be happy that would to. Be great. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you, Wendy. Are there any other questions? Um, are we going to put, uh, we're now putting a cost limit on this, you said about $40,000, Bill? Right. Yes. But we don't know exactly. It could be, you know, it could be 30. So I don't. And it could be 50. Right. Right. Okay. All right, as long as everyone understands that, um, we've had a motion and a second to um, authorize the highway department to order gravel for road grading. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrie, were you in a, did you say yes? I didn't hear you see, oh, she's Hi. muted. Hi. Thank you. Any abstentions? Motion passes. Ken will be glad to know he can purchase some gravel. Okay, um, is there anything else that we need to add to the department reports? Bill, are you all set? I, th I think so. 
And uh, does the select board have any other questions? Can we talk about the police and their role in this? Sure. Sure. Do you, do you want me to address? I know you had some questions earlier mm -hmm. on your email. I do know that both, I believe both Robbie and Dave have reached out to Max Market to, in, to uh, encourage them, to encourage their customers to wear a mask and to practice social distancing when they're in the store. And I think they also encourage them to put up some signage as well within the store. And I think they may have done the same at the farmer's market as well. Um, as far as other stores, I don't know if they've reached out. To, I mean, of course, there, there are very few other um, uh, businesses in operation or total operation right now. They're accepting customers. Um, I don't know if they've reached out to Maplefields or not. I can follow up with them on that. So does it seem like things are changing in Max and around town with people wearing masks and practicing social more? And I was in Maplefield uh, I, the other night, everyone had one um, that was there at that time. Yeah, I mean, anecdotally, I've noticed a lot more masks just driving up and, you know, going around town. And I mean, I haven't been, of course, I've been mostly working from home, but the anecdotal uh, evidence I've seen, I'd say yes. Have you noticed that, Robbie and Dave, when you've been in or your people have been in? David's muted. Robbie is not. Yes, uh, I've, I've noticed more people are wearing masks. Uh, I haven't been in any stores to speak of. I try to avoid them like the plague, if you will. Uh, <laughs> So I can't, I can't speak about the grocery stores and stuff. But just as an aside, we, we sent a letter to um, Max headquarters. Um, I attached a document that was from the ACCD that talked about uh, retail guidance for the COVID-19. And it also provided links to OSHA guidance and from the Vermont Retail Grocers Association, they had a link on the same um, information sheet that provided guidance. So uh, hopefully, you know, they pass that that down to the folks here in Woodstock. Um, and maybe that's why we're seeing some more masks, at least for the, you know, for their employees is what it referred to, probably obviously, when you talk about guidance for retailers. Thank you. It at the plexiglass shields that have been placed at um, Maple Fields and near the cash registers at Max Market, are they a recommendation, Robbie? Are they uh, something to do with that ACCD document? Without, I'd have to re read it, but I am, as memory serves, I think that was one of the recommendations. I'd have to look at the document again. Because they have been installed in both stores, Maplefields and uh, Max Market. Okay. Uh, are there, is there something else you'd like to address about the protection and safety in this time? Sorry? Did someone start to say something? I think Dave was. David? No, nope, I didn't have anything to add. So there's a couple of new people that have joined us by phone. So um, let me go over the, the instructions again. If you are on the phone and you want to ask a question, then you can unmute yourself by pressing star six. If you want to put your hand on, you can press star nine. Thank you. Do we know if um, if John is any of those people who have joined us recently? Um, I know that Ken just joined and he's trying to unmute himself because he had a question. Can you okay. tell me the last four digits? Uh, I think I'm he's on sure. zero three eight. One nine one zero maybe. I'm sorry, I can't hear when two people are speaking. 
I just joined in here, and uh, John doesn't know anything of what's going on yet. <laughs> this is Sylvie. Hi, yeah. Sylvia. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, you hear me? And the phone number ending in 9038 is Ken. Ken? Okay. Thank you. Well, in, in the highway department, Sylvia, we just... In the highway department? Yes. We just yeah. authorized the um, superintendent of the highway department to order some gravel to get the road grading started which is one element of outdoor work the highway department is allowed to do right now, according to the governor's order. And we authorize purchase of gravel to get that done. And you might want to tell John that. Okay. Um, we'll see if he has any questions about that. How's the... Uh, Anything about sewer department, Bill? No, no just uh, kind of just continuing with the necessary protocols. You know, wearing masks and gloves, social distancing. Well, they have to do a lot of that anyway in their. They work. have to right. They're they they have a lot of regulations anyway due to their scope of work. Correct. Thank and you. does the uh, thought of no street sweeping affect the sewers, the cleanliness of the drains? <laughs> Yeah, well, that that's a that is a that is a concern. I mean, if that's they're if, talking about the sewer right now. If that's something, maybe we want to make a some sort of formal request, and I don't know how far we get the that that's that's a concern. You know, to send that on to the to you know one of our legislators or governor's office that you know that's a concern of not sweeping the sweeps. Sweeping the streets can lead to other health concerns. So, please let me know. Yes, that can. Well, when the governor speaks today, he's going to talk about um, some outdoor work and how soon he expects that he will be releasing the hold on that. And so. If we all listen at 11 today, we may hear about that. I doubt sweep, street sweeping with the vehicle is going to be picked up right away, but there may be some other opportunities for getting some of that debris out of the street and not down the storm drains. I'm sure a lot went down with all the rain we had earlier this week. There's probably a lot more sediment in there than would have been if um, we had, we did sweep one day last week, I think, but um, we haven't again. And that will be, that could be later in the season, a uh, handicap for us, but we'll address that when we need to. And as soon as we're able to move on street sweeping, we will, um, there will be a discussion about timing and we will get the work done. So Bill, I would support um, uh, putting in a uh, request that that is lifted for emergency street sweeping so that at least we, so we can carry on doing this because it's one person in a cab, so that seems safe. Mm -hmm. There's very little traffic, so it's a, it, that's safe. It's a safe time to do it. Um, and there doesn't, I can't understand any reason why this should be postponed. Thank you, Jill. Um, Thank you. A resident reported um, at the end of last week about um, leaves and debris that had accumulated on a storm drain. And of course we had all the rain Monday. The storm drain, the grate is completely clean now. And <laughs> I think it all probably that is an accumulation that went down into the storm drain. So thank you, Jill and Bill for moving on that. Um, so we're finished with the department reports. I'd like to move down into new business. And the first item in new business is related to property taxes and the legislative action that is being proposed 
The Senate has taken action. However, their vote does not take place until later today. Following their vote, the bill that is being deliberated will go on to the House. And with the earliest possibility would be the beginning of next week. Because once the House gets it, they may make adjustments, they may vote to change some things. And what is listed in this bill, I had an email from Allison the other night. It involves uh, the possibility of penalty and interest being excused for a period of time. And it, it many aspects of tax collect collection are outlined there. And some of it has to do with the statewide property tax, which is due in Montpelier at the end of June, and whether or not they'll be extending any of that time, which then has a trickle down effect on the town. Um, there have been a lot of suggestions made. Some are practical, some are would be difficult for the towns. Involving, for instance, if the tax department or the state treasurer were to, were to try to get a bond or loan, a municipal loan for this, lack of collection at the end of the fiscal year. And we all know, and it probably doesn't need to be said, but any of those kinds of loans or opportunities would have a trickle down effect on the town and we would be paying for the interest or for whatever penalties are related there. And um, for what it's worth, I consider it important for us to make those decisions for the town because we are then responsible and we'll take action to um, work on behalf of the town and restore what we can because it's our money that we'll be losing if we are able to take some penalty and interest away. And then if we in turn have to pay more money to the state for what they're doing to borrow money, that will be a double whammy for us. So we really need to be patient with the legislature. Um, I'm hoping I have something good to report on next Tuesday but I don't think we'll have to wait to an evening meeting. It'll probably be quite public when we get that information, if we get that kind of approval. So, so can I just, are we talking about the taxes that are due on May 11th, Mary? May 1st. May 1st. Okay. Due on May 1st. On May 11th, what we decided May 11th would be is the date that we will have a good knowledge of all the taxes that were due on May 1st, that they have arrived. Because across country, since we still honor postmark, it could take seven or eight days for mail to get from California or the state of Washington to get over here. Things are moving very fast in the mail right now. We all know that. And so that we're hoping that on May 11th, we'll have a good reflection of what is still outstanding for us. So I just want to say for the people who are listening who haven't heard an earlier meeting that the, May, the taxes we collect on May 1st, most of those go to the state to pay our education taxes. So we're hoping that everybody who can will pay their taxes. And we've noted that many are uh, are in accounts with mortgages, so they will come to us anyway. Um, so we're hoping that most of the taxes are taxes and keep things moving like that. So it's you went out on us for a few words there, Jill. We didn't okay. hear you completely. Everything you said. Um, okay. So the taxes that are due on May the first are due to the town but the majority of those, of that cash that comes in, will be paid out to the state as our share of education taxes. 
So if we do not receive those taxes, then we will end up owing the state money. And that's what see if those taxes can be delayed in any way. Um, there's been a few new people joined by phone. So I just want to emphasize again that if you're on the phone, you may be muted. To unmute yourself, press star six. To tell us that you want to ask a question, press star nine. Um, I would like to mention one other thing related to taxes. Beth Fish has put a question and answer sheet on um, the listserv on our website and we'll continue to do so if anything changes and periodically you'll see that question and answer sheet which will give you instructions on how you can pay your taxes through mail what's accessible she will answer all calls that are made to town hall and forwarded to her extension. You'll have to go through a couple of different um, messages and eventually you'll get to Beth's personal extension and leave her a message if you have questions about the amount that you owe or anything like that and she will respond to you as soon as she is able. But most likely within a day or within that day or early the next morning. And the mailing address is there, and for anyone who wants to hear it, it's PO Box 488 in Woodstock. And um, anyone can mail in their check, and they're processed immediately. When Beth, uh, Beth is in the office two days a week in the afternoon for a few hours to do that kind of work. So thank you. Dave Brown asked me to up, to post those kinds of updates onto the community forum. So I'm posting them on the forums as well, whenever Beth updates them. And around Woodstock, Vermont, is that, okay, thank you. Um, okay. Ken wasn't on, was he went, Ken, did you hear when we talked about the gravel? No, I did not. I was not on at that time. Okay. Well, um, the select board did vote for you to um, purchase your, the gravel that you need. Thank you very much. You are welcome. We haven't been over your other sheet here that you have if you want to go over, or is that going to be on Tuesday evening? My understanding was Tuesday, but I'm willing it either. Oh no, we'll put it on the agenda Tuesday and then it'll even be legal to talk about it. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. David, um, the Heartland Ambulance Contract information is next. Would you like to speak to that? Yes, I would. Or would you please speak to that? Sure. So Woodstock uh, Ambulance sent out a letter earlier this winter of a rate increase to our sub subscribing towns that contract with us for ambulance service. Um, the town of Hartland this rate increase. You don't have to repeat what you said. The town of Hartland, the rest of that sentence went away, David. Yep. Uh, had a hard time swallowing the rate increase. And Frank uh, Heald was the town manager at the time and him and I discussed this and we um, opted not to do any action at the time and let them come back to us with an offer. So this week, Dave or Ormanston, town manager in Heartland, contacted me and he would like the rate increase for the town of Heartland to be $45.16 per capita. So with discussing this with him, um, we have a very small amount of people we service in their section of town. Um, we do roughly annually 12 calls per year. Um, so if they stayed with the current 
increase, it would amount to $32,550. With what they're offering is $21,000 flat. Um, and what and, do they currently pay? Excuse me? What do they currently pay? Uh, $33 per capita. And I didn't do the math on that. I can do that real quick. But I believe it's 15800 Uh, it's $15,345. Um, they did talk to uh, Windsor taking over um, for that section of town. Um, and we have some other agreements with them that would probably affect this should they go away, which are uh, we do some fire protection for them, 911 road numbering and street numbering, and also some mutual aid plowing agreements. Um, so after talking with Bill and myself having a conversation earlier this week, we recommend that we take the $21,000 a year from them, charge them the 45, 16 per capita. Uh, David, how many, um, how many uh, citizens do we serve in? Heartland. 465. And what are the what is the call volume in that direction? About 12 calls a year. Really? And have you so heard from any it, other towns? Every other town has accepted it. Okay. Every other town has accepted what we proposed in the fall? Yes, but they have much greater call volumes. Okay. And do you think this is a reasonable proposal that they've made to us? I know you and Bill recommend that we accept it, but is, are you settling for it or do you think it's a, a good proposal? No, I, I think this is very fair. If you look at the call volume and the amount of service we actually give them uh, with the ambulance, I, I think it's fair. And I think the $21,000 is better than no dollars a year. How will you react if other towns come back and say, well, you gave Heartland a break, can you give us a break too? Yep, well, again, the other towns, their call volume is much greater. So I see no reason to lower any other town. We knew town of Heartland would be the only sticking point because they do have easy access to other service. Um, I'd move that accept the $400. You'll move they accept that? Do you move? Hello, Sylvia. Oh, yeah. Did you? Were you saying something? I moved that we accept it. The forty-five. And so I we might want to say something. Yes. Okay. John says he he goes along with that twenty-one thousand. Would he like to second Butch's motion? You want to second the motion? Yeah, I'll second it. He'll second it. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to contract with the town of Cartland for 4516 per capita for um, ambulance service for the next fiscal year. That would be a total of $21,000 per year. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> A motion is motion is approved. Thank you. Um, now I went over something. We need to go back and pick up item B under new business, which has to do with the planning and zoning administrative officer transition plan. Bill has information. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to report, unfortunately, this is a, probably a little unorthodox given the situation, but um, we do have a new town planner and administrative officer, uh, Neil Leitner, who's currently living in Rutland, Vermont. Uh, just to give you a little background, he does have uh, quite a bit of experience here in Vermont, and he's got some experience down in the New York City area in planning and zoning. Um, I'd certainly be happy to send you his resume. I know there's been it's kind of um, been a little 
awkward here because we he got hired and under one regime and then coming in under another. So I'd be happy to send that along to you. Um, so just kind of planning his transition. As you know, Michael Brands is planning to retire May 1st. So I have been coordinating with Michael to make sure this is a smooth transition as much as possible. Uh, what Michael is doing, he's going to reach out to Neil and hopefully come up with a time that maybe he can come over and they can drive around in separate vehicles, not together. So maybe in separate vehicles, he can show, show him um, a lot of Woodstock. Uh, he's also going to kind of arrange some phone conversations as well so they can discuss some current projects going on. I do know Lynn has sent um, several of the, the regulations and the, and the comprehensive town plan to Neil as well to, to fill him in. And um, as far as I know, that's going along. I'm kind of keeping close contact with, um, with Michael as well to make sure this is continuing along and I'll be in close contact with him over the next couple of weeks to make sure this transition is as smooth as possible. Any Thank questions, you. concerns? I, I would love to see his resume if you would send that around. Oh, sure, absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I might not be, I'll try to do that on Monday. I might not, I'm probably not gonna be in the office today, but I can go in the office Monday and scan that and fax it or scan it to email it to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, uh, liquor licenses are next. And there's a question from Jeff before you move on. Okay, Jeff. Yeah, Bill, would you please send uh, that resume to the trustees as well? Yeah, th thanks, Jeff, for, for stepping in um, or bringing that up because I'm thinking we may need, because I'm th the plan is to put him on for, um, for Tuesday night, isn't it, Mary, to approve yeah. him? And so we probably need the, uh, the Board of Trustees approval on that just to kind of um, to make it all official. So I'm not, I was kind of un unsure of the whole process here. So I'll, I'll send that, but I'll send that resume on to you, Jeff. Bill, I yeah, think Sally that. Miller, I think Sally Miller is on the line here as well. And she might be um, able to enlighten us about the questions we have. Yes, so, that would be great. Um, Thanks. Jeff, are your questions, <clears throat> you, are you all hey. set for now? Yes, uh, yes, I am. I, okay. Because I believe the village, the village needs to weigh in on this um, as as well as we share the expense for this position. Sure. So we're going to hear from Sally now. I think she might have some things to enlighten us about. Sure. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Um, so, as far as I understand, the town planner and zoning administrator is a dual position, and the planning commission actually appoints the um, town zoning officer. We do that every three years. The town planner is appointed by the municipal boards. So on the um, interviewing committee and you know looking for a new town planner, we had um, three planning commissioner members as well as Frank and Michael interviewing people. And we actually did two rounds. The first round we thought we had somebody and then he decided not to come. The second round, we actually had three really good candidates. And Neil was um, a little bit more experienced and also readily available. So it was, he, was a, he was a really good candidate. I actually have his resume and all his information. I'm glad to get that to Bill and so he can send it out to people. I can send it electronically. Um, but we, so we made a recommendation, which Frank then took to Neil. And I don't really know what happened after we recommended to Frank that that he that we should hire Neil. So that somebody will have to go to Frank and say what happened because we didn't hear anything else after that point. Well, I met Neil when when he was at Town Hall um, one afternoon and I had a good conversation with him. And I'm happy to report that uh, a big focus in his um, work as a planning and zoning administrative officer is to do with conservation and clean water. And in fact, he, when he worked in the northern part of Vermont, he was part of a movement for um, cleaning up the waterways and in a way that was not um, not of big expense to farmers 
he left Vermont before everything was in place, but he's, his clean water action is, uh, is what he was most interested in, in a job that he had in the northern part of the state. He spoke about planning and zoning with enthusiasm, and um, he really, and, and Sally met him too, he, he really seemed to be excited about the possibility. Did you think so, Sally? Yes, I agree. He was, he was very excited about getting back into planning and zoning in Vermont. And yes. I know Michael called his references and they were all very enthusiastic as well. Great, thank you. Now, do we want, um, since we're going to talk about this on Tuesday evening, Jeff, should your um, board come to the meeting, or well, join the meeting, can't go anywhere, but <laughs> if they'd like to join in the meeting, that would be a great idea. Do you think that it should occur that way? Or are you comfortable yourself with, you'll have to vote, you'll all have to vote as a board, I believe. And it's kind of to ratify his appointment, correct? Because the, um, Sally, help me on this, please. As you said, it's a dual effort, but the boards have to uh, ratify the selection before the appointment is made. Is that correct? I, I don't know the process. I'm sorry. I just know that we typically reappoint the, the and I'm going to look at my administrator about this. So we typically, so the administrator officer half of the position is appointed on a three year cycle. So every three years, we reappoint the administrator officer. So that's, that's right. the administrator. Well, we've got some quick homework to do, Bill, before Tuesday evening, and we'll get it done. Um, so Jeff, what do you think about um, inviting the trustees to join our meeting that night? Well, Mary, I think that if uh, it's determined that we need to take our, our vote, we might as well get the vote done the same evening. Okay. Uh, and so we would need to warn that, Bill, we would need to warn that as a, a, a village trustees meeting as well so that we could uh, participate in the voting side of things. Um, so I, I, I think that would be the way to go. Okay. Sure. And I'm just going to say again that if, if this is indeed a planning commission vote as well, then we, sh we have not taken a formal vote either. So oh, you have not. Somebody I needs to figure that out. All right, I was not aware of that. Okay. Um, so well, I'll, I'll do some research on that and we'll quick. So get back thank to you. Thank you. Because we have to, we will post the agenda for the meeting this afternoon. And everyone should understand that there may be an alteration to it depending on what we determine. But we will put that item on the agenda and. Um, so it will be public that we're going to talk about the zoning administrator. And we'll see how that goes between now and Tuesday. We, you may get a memo or an email late on Tuesday that says we can't do it for some reason that night. So give us a day or so. And the weekend coming in the middle of it <laughs> won't move anything very fast, but we'll do the best we can. Thank you. Um, oh, Sally, let me ask you one more question, please. How many, did you say three planning commissioners were involved with the uh, interview process? Um, yes, there, and I can't remember if Sam was actually, because we did all these interviews, obviously, over Skype, and Sam was at some of them and not all of them, but we definitely discussed all the candidates um, in depth after we'd interviewed them, so there was a conversation about all three of them. All right, thank you. All right, so that's where we are with planning and zoning. Um, liquor licenses, Malaza and Dr. Coburn's tonic have submitted their licenses. Um, and these are the last two we have to consider for this year. Everything is in order for those to be granted at this time. So is there, I would move we approve both together. Thank you, Carrie. I'll second that. Thanks, Jill. 
approve the liquor licenses or something? Yeah, yeah, I'll approve them. Yeah. He'll approve them. Okay, thank you. Motion's been Here made. Here goes the from library, but the uh, money for the licenses, have they? Have you received the money for oh, the yes. license? Yes. Checks are yeah. in the post office. Are. All right. Motion's been made and seconded to approve liquor licenses, renewals for Malaza and Dr. Coburn's tonic. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, we're down to the other business section. I have one note from Alita Wilson thanking us on behalf of the Pentangle Board and the employees for the rent forgiveness for the three month period ending June 30th. Um, let me look here, see what else I have. That is the only information I have under other business. Um, any questions from those who are listening in today or visibly with us. Is there any possibility that you can print up this agenda for today? You mean the minutes from this meeting? Yeah. Yeah, Nikki will have that done probably by the early part of the of the week and we'll include it with um, the copying of those truck permits that John is going to review and minutes of the last couple of meetings where John wasn't with us. So okay. We'll get all that together for you and I'll let you know and you can come and get it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Now, are there other things that anyone would like to take up today? Else you want to. What about the overweight truck from it? She's, she's, she's oh, just, got them on there. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to look at them. Yeah. He, she's oh, yeah. going to send them to you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pick them up. Okay. <laughs> Are you there you still? Those without your, okay, John. Um, all right, now, citizens' comments? Anyone who's in on the meeting like to speak? So to unmute yourself, press star six. If you want to raise your hand, press star. Nothing. I see now. Is Beth asking, trying, waiting to ask a question? Okay. Thank you. All right. Then I'd like a motion to adjourn oh. this meeting. So motion motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll, make it. I'll second it. John said he'd second it. Do we have a motion? Why does Carrie make a motion? motion? John is second in, seconding that, and that's a non-debatable motion. So the m meeting will stand adjourned in one moment. Someone just came on and joined us, and um, I want her to know where we stand in this meeting, and she can ask any questions of the agenda, and we'll try to review it with her. Seaton? Oh, Jesus. She's been in the meeting quite a while. Oh, She's has she been there? Oh, yes. I didn't. Okay. All right. So it appears that there are no... Ken, you have something? Okay, then we'll stand adjourned until 6 p.m. Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. You will. Thank you. Nikki, Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, yeah, you, thank, you, thank you, guys. Do a great job pushing those. It's very nice where you are. Pardon? Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Look at Butch Sutherland's backdrop. <laughs> Hopefully, we will be on on um, Zoom by Tuesday night. Okay. Well, that so, would be great. Nikki, will Hopefully. you call Sylvia and have a, a another try? Maybe a. A, a, an attempt to get them on Zoom. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got to go back on. Uh, 
Comcast again. They got me on to Xfinity, and I cannot get back on now. So oh. uh, something screwed up somewhere, probably in my head. But. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll give you another chance for sure. We can be okay. to join All right. Thank you. If you can join us by video, please join us by phone Tuesday evening. Okay. 6, 6 p.m. Thank yes, you. I've got that down. All right.